They're not given the tools for them to progress. And if they're not given the tools, who's gonna run the industry which we want to build? Who's gonna run the energy uh, companies which want? Who's gonna run all these things in the future if they don't have those skills when they, you cannot actually give them the opportunity to do that? And this is where we cannot actually, I cannot understand. We need to bring our youth closer, closer to where the government is. We need to bring our youth closer to exactly how things are going to be uh, 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 portrayed in terms of industry and at the same time in terms of exactly how they can contribute to the society. And this is a lack of uh, uh, vision at the moment, and we need to put that forward uh, in, in these particular cases. Build an industrial base that will allow the young uh, uh, to practice, because of that, exactly what I've talked about, and government should draw a policy for regeneration of uh, industry. Why I call it regeneration is because when I went to Copper Belt, and uh, I was born on the Copper Belt myself, grew up on the Copper, born and bred on the Copper Belt, every time I used to actually go from one town to another, you feel proud that we have built so much. The industry there, Ndola was booming. And in the places where I used to walk when I was a kid, when I went to see my grandma in Ndola, I used to walk all the way from Chifubu, if everybody knows Chifubu in Ndola. I used to walk from Chifubu all the way to the, uh, to the trade fair uh, and so on. All the way there, and I used to go through the industrial area. And all those companies when I was a kid, they're gone. They're shut. Nothing. I'm telling you. Nothing. And this is amazing. Where, what have we done? And this is what I'm talking about. Eh? This is what I'm talking about. We are all trying to say some people give all these different ideas and so on, but they're not implementing them because perhaps there can be leadership in the government position, but leadership must be at different levels as well. People in the industry themselves who are implementing the policies of government must actually be there as leaders. But there, there's a short sort of uh, cutoff between the government and the people who are implementing those particular policies. We want to join them so that we can actually deliver those goods in a, in, in a better way and, uh, and deliver what we have as a nation. Zanda should insist on having uh, investors who create a supply chain within. And this is a bigger point which I'll be talking about later. And you'll be able to listen to me when I actually give you those particular uh, cases. Education. <coughs> to me, education is the backbone of a nation. Because we talk of the fifth development plan, we talk of a, a millennium uh, 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 development goals. Many of you perhaps have read of that. We talk of exactly how we can move Zambia from the poverty level where it is to the future whereby it will be prosperous and everybody will be having a meal uh, uh, a day and will move from the point z 0.5 of a cent a day to at least 10 to 20 dollars a day. If we can move, that would be a great achievement which we have. So those are the things which we need to do. And to do that, we need education. And to do, to have education, what we need to do are a few things. First of all, there is one thing which we have, like a, a misjoint, cohesion throughout the system itself, from primary education to higher education. There's no that synergy. People move from primary education to secondary education, but by the time when they move from primary to secondary education, they're cut off. And I'll tell you why. Every one of you knows that we have examinations in grade seven. And if you don't pass the grade seven, what happens? You are a dropout. What I'm trying to say is, how can we in modern age still follow that same useless theory which we had in the early years, whereby we fail the young people perhaps who are playful at that particular age, but can become useful later on. If we did not do that, here, this place here, will never have Churchill. This place here will never have uh, uh, Blair himself because Blair failed uh, his uh, uh, 11 plus and then from there he reset the examination. We'll never have this. And these are the things which I'm talking about. We are failing a lot, a lot of our juniors, the students themselves, the people from the primary school to the secondary school. A big chunk, a lot of you who they're afraid. The uh, speech by, uh, mm, by uh, 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 mm, the Minister for, uh, uh, of Education. He gave us figures that of 
2,000 uh, uh, of uh, people who sit in grade 7 examination, only 1,000 passed. And he, uh, uh, I asked him the question, I wrote to him in a letter, I said, where did the other 4,000 go? He said, no, the other uh, uh, 4,000 others, either they are repeating the year or they've gone into doing something else. I said, how? 11 year old. <laughs> what is that 11 year old going to do? And what I want to do myself when I get some, some time into getting to the position of this, I want to make sure that our education is uh, cohesive. And I want to make sure that our education moves from the way what you call grade, uh, uh, grade 1 all the way up to form 5, which we call grade 12 today, all the way up to grade 12. And that's the time when we're going to have dropouts at that particular level. So this is what we need to do in order to develop, in order to deliver in the near, in the near future and then in uh, uh, the many years uh, uh, to come. So within that, these are the outcomes. We we'll have highly skilled jobs and we need people to fill those jobs. If we are failing 4,000 from 1,000 on a population of 12 million, where are you going to get the people from to run all these companies? You tell me. It's virtually impossible. You need the card, or you need the people who are educated in order to run these particular cases. And as you can see, I've given the whole uh, uh, menu of uh, different education systems, from the primary to secondary. From secondary, you can go to further, where it will be colleges to get the skills which are required, or you will go to higher uh, education, where you can become the leader of uh, uh, anything, industry, and so on. So we need to create this particular issue, and everything must be flowing in order to actually ask get uh, uh, the deliverables which we want, especially in the 21st century. We cannot afford, we cannot afford anymore to be dropping students uh, at uh, Form 1, grade, uh, uh, I mean, at uh, uh, grade 7, Form 2, uh, and so on. We want the progression. This is the colonial framework, which I was talking about. And this is our economy, which, for example, was left to us by the British when we got independence. What it did, it says to us, yes, Zambia, oh, with all these minerals, that's very good, and what we're going to do, you will become what? A raw material supply, which is at the bottom here. We supply all those raw materials, it goes into copper, then copper is sent all the way abroad to be manufactured. That's what we do, up to today. We do that. We've got nothing to show off that we're using our own material as much as possible. The method, I mean, that is a token in the ocean. And the, the things which they produce here, you can never throw them away. And those are exactly the things which I'm talking about. We need to actually get on that. And look at this. <coughs> the margins. The primes are overseas. That's where the profits are. Now, you see my profit, and that's why Zambia is getting at the tip in terms of profit. And look at the people who are abroad, how much they're getting in profit. That's what you must understand. You must understand that we must, we must do something about this. We must do something about manufacturing. We must do something about understanding exactly how things are going to be portrayed so that we move forward as a country. At least if we were in the mid-range here, I would be happy because at least we are having a big chunk of that profit remaining in Zambia. At the moment, nothing is remaining in Zambia. We are right at the tip here because we are considered as raw material since the colonial days and how we have to move from there, and this is exactly what we have. 43 years later, we are still exactly where we were when we got independence. Remember that. The past three presidents had different agendas. The first president, the agenda was actually to bring a country, a young country which has come out of uh, 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 colonialism, to put it on foot so that it can grow and so on. And that was great. The second president brought democracy. And from there, democratic, of course, this is what we are talking, all of us can, can uh, present our ideas and vision to uh, everywhere we want to, and this is great. And our democracy in Zambia is, is a, a, a true picture of, uh, of reality. The third president all started on economic growth, and that's what they're doing now. And this is exactly now what we need to do now, is to move forward, and not to move forward in a small step. This is why I don't like people who tell me, oh, we need to move forward in a tiny, tiny step like that. No, in order for you to deliver for your own country, you must move in bigger steps. Bigger, 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 bigger steps. They must not be small steps. And how we do that is because we need somebody who's gonna come as the next president 
who's not going to deliver on policies, on politics, and so on. We want someone who can deliver on wealth creation. That's what we want. That's the next president we want to take forward uh, in, in this particular context. We want somebody who come there and say, I want to build road here, and they build it. I want to build this industry here, and they build it. Because he understands, or she understands, exactly what and how those industries are supposed to perform in order to deliver the wealth which we are looking for. No more getting people in power who are there as lawyers, because lawyers don't make money. Wealth creation is made by engineers. Wealth creation is made by people who actually have work in industries. Lawyers are there to help us in order to move forward in those particular cases. 